Today is 8th March, International Women's Day. And so first and foremost, revolutionary greetings to all of us women. And uh, we need to remember that 8th March is about all of us. It is about ordinary women, struggling women. And it is not a greeting card day where suddenly governments, corporations, corporate governments wake up and start greeting us and wishing especially uh, successful women or beautiful women, because it's not about that. It's about our everyday struggles to usher in a more equal world and a society where being equal is a society that moves forward and that expands freedoms for everyone. Uh, and we need to revisit the history of 8th March and remember its radical socialist origins where the Marxist Clara Zetkin actually first proposed an international working women's uh, day uh, to honor the struggles of women and their um, struggle for equality. And 8th March, uh, the date was chosen uh, because of the March Revolution of 1848. Uh, so honoring and remembering its origins, we also, I think, uh, need to um, celebrate uh, our victories, honor our struggles, and also take time to reflect, reflect on some of the failures, on some of um, the struggles that uh, remain for us to wage. And we need to once again uh, dedicate ourselves and find our dreams and uphold our dreams and uh, find the resolve uh, to continue to struggle in solidarity um, to usher in a more egalitarian society. So for us in Meghalaya, let us look at what are the struggles uh, that continue uh, to await us as women. Uh, I think a very, very pressing issue continues, sadly, to be gender-based violence and violence against women and children. And, uh, you know, the fact that uh, uh, we have to break down patriarchal structures and understand the origins of even violence, that excuses of, you know, um, alcoholism or upbringing or broken families are just excuses and that the, the root cause of violence is really an unequal world and an un unequal power relations. And so that is what we have to address. We also have to address the fact that um, we have to be able to ensure speedy justice to, to victims of violence because justice delayed is justice denied. We have struggled for so many uh, cases of rapes and molestation, sexual harassment, where for years, even if the, the woman found the courage to speak up, you know, there's still um, that kind of stigma. So we have to, as women, as a society, ensure that we understand that the root cause of gender-based violence is unequal power relations, and that's what we have to address, and that we have to ensure better policing, but most of all, a better justice system where um, women actually uh, find justice and um, timely justice. The other issues that still confront us as women of Meghalaya is that we continue to have a very high maternal mortality. And um, this again is linked to other things. For instance, if our PHCs, dispensaries are in shambles, how do you expect women to have access to better health care? If your ICDS and your nutrition has been poor from the beginning, how do you expect women not to be anemic? And if you do not pay ASHA workers, how do you expect then that they will be able to help, uh, you know, uh, women who are pregnant and in, during the time of deliveries? The other big issue that confronts us is about livelihoods, whether in the informal or the formal sector. We have to ensure that workers' rights are women's rights and that if you cannot ensure workers' rights, then you are going to enslave women and men, for that matter. And so, for instance, the Maternity Benefit Act has to be implemented in letter and spirit. For those in the formal sector, it shouldn't be that if they are uh, pregnant and need to take maternity leave of six months, which is a right, they have to go and find a replacement, they have to pay for that um, uh, replacement at work, or that they are eased off from work just because they are engaged in social reproduction at that level. And then for women in the informal sector, hawkers, our domestic worker friends, we have to ensure safety for them. We have to ensure that the sexual harassment complaint cells are operational for them because they face 
a lot of that kind of harassment at their workplace, which is an informal sector workplace. We have to ensure that social security in terms of health care, in terms of education for their children, in terms of uh, the PDS, a functional PDS for food grains, water, housing, need to be in place so that their livelihoods can be something that brings them not just a hand-to-mouth income. Casualization of work in the formal sector, non-payment of minimum wages. We need to be getting living wages. And these are issues not just of women but of men. And we have to continue to fight to get these rights. The other big issue for us now in Meghalaya is this exploitative um, usage of our resources, whether it is our rivers, our forests, and our other resources. And we as women need to be guardians of these resources so that we do not deplete everything and we do not actually uh, bring in a catastrophic, you know, uh, ecology in the state. And um, we can take the lead and we must take the lead in protecting our resources for our future generations. Sadly, Meghalaya, in all the indicators, all the reports this year, last year, we have always been placed last. Our poverty index, our education index, our ability to earn, our ability to, our developmental inde indices are all so poor. And one of the main reasons for this has been that there has not been a full participation of women, especially in grassroots institutions which has meant that funds have not been able to be transferred to these institutions, which have meant that decision-making has not been shared. And when decision-making is not shared, and when there is no participation, you cannot expect on the ground for things to change. And we have been saying this for so long, and we will continue to say it, that it is not only time for women to fully participate in the traditional institutions, not only that it is constitutionally, legally wrong, but it is actually embarrassing for us as a society to continue to use matrilineal tradition, custom as an excuse and as a lie, actually, because this has not been our history. And we have to start telling the truth about the fact that women of Meghalaya prior to colonial times had an opportunity and did participate more fully, more actively in all spheres, including governance at village, at local level. And so we have to continue to fight, to expand democratic processes and our democratic rights and our rights as women in institutions, political institutions, starting from the grassroots. And in the next 10 years, we have to be able to see women leading some of these institutions because by participating fully it not only is about power sharing but it is about getting the best whether you're a man or a woman you if you are able to contribute to society if you're able to participate fully it is a society that will gain and not lose and if we continue to be unequal, we will not be able to develop. An egalitarian society is a society that will move forward and move ahead. And it is a society where development will come. And we have to remember this. We will be accused of repeating this fact over and over again. But we have to continue to repeat this fact because it is a fact and it is the truth. We cannot allow for people who want to continue to uphold unequal patriarchal structures to repeat their lies. We have to wipe out that lie by continuing to be truth seekers and truth speakers and we should not be afraid. We have nothing, nothing to lose and everything to gain and we can do it and we must do it and together we will be able to achieve a better society for ourselves and our children.